Hi friends, today we're going to do a read aloud. Um, the read aloud that we're going to do today is really good for second grade and third grade students. Um, however, all students can listen to this read aloud. The questions for at the end for comprehension will be really um, geared towards second and third graders, okay? So I hope you guys enjoy this awesome story today. Um, I love this book. This book is called Sweetie. It's by Andrea Zool. And this book is about a character named Sweetie. Sweetie is an awkward, even for a naked mole rat. Her unusual hobbies include identifying fungi, interpretive dance, and talking passionately about her doll, warrior princess Zorna. But surely there are other mushroom lovers out there somewhere and Sweetie is stepping it up a notch to find them. So today we are going to read this story all about Sweetie, the awkward, naked mole rat. As I read today, I'm going to read both pages and then I will show you a close up of the pictures. Sweetie by Andrea Zuu. And there's Sweetie sitting under a mushroom reading a book and the book is called Mushrooms for You and Me. Here we go. Sweetie was awkward, even for a naked mole rat. And you guys can't see it yet, but there's an asterisk right here after the word rat. It's like a little star, which means there's going to be extra information down here at the bottom. So I'm going to read that to you. So in parentheses, it says, please note that naked mole rats are born without fur, but not without the love of clothes. The illustrator is grateful for this since she didn't have to draw a bunch of highly embarrassing pictures. All right, so remember, Sweetie's very awkward, even for a naked mole rat. So here we have a long line of different mole rats. Notice Sweetie, all by herself. Her own grandmother called her a little square peg. Sweetie didn't exactly know what that meant. Here's her grandmother and she's saying, well, aren't you grandma's little square peg? And um, Sweetie has a question mark there. I'm gonna show you this picture. Is Sweetie thinking or is Sweetie speaking? How do you know? You can answer that out loud right now. Is she thinking or speaking? And how do we know? Look at her bubble right here compared to her grandma's bubble. So she called her a little square peg. But she did know that she didn't always fit in. Again, all the other naked mole rats over here and here's Sweetie. Sweetie could be intense. My doll's name is Ellie and she likes cupcakes. My doll is David. My grandma gave him to me. This is Sunshine. She wants to be a doctor. Who's your doll, sweetie? Here's sweetie. This is Warrior Princess Sorna, friend of the friendless destroyer of evil lover of chocolate beet cake with cream cheese frosting. Her favorite color is Aubergine, and my mom made her for me. The author said she can be a little intense. Look at the text in her speech bubble compared to all of the other mole rats on this page. Why do you think the author made her text look like this and theirs look like that? And how does that make her intense? Think about that. And people found her hobbies a bit bizarre. Would you like to come over to my house and help me identify fungi? <laughs> no, thank you. Fungi is, if you guys don't know, fungi means more than one fungus. A mushroom, for example, is a type of fungi. Fungi can be found, they grow in the ground, and you can actually go pick them. Some fungi are safe to eat, but you should ask your parents before eating them. She really likes identifying and looking for fungi. Occasionally, Sweetie did things that others had a hard time comprehending. Like the day she gave her book report through interpretive dance. What 
book is that? Hmm. There were times when Sweetie wondered what it would be like to be someone else. Someone like Deb. Deb always said the right thing and had stylish friends. Best of all, she had beautiful hair. Sweetie wanted her hair to be like Deb's. Here's Deb. I love how the illustrator offered us some labels here. So we've got Deb, Deb's hair. So Sweetie wanted her hair to be just like Deb's. Sweetie, is she thinking or speaking here? She thought maybe she should try a wig. Feels itchy. Then there were times when Sweetie just felt like being Sweetie. All right, I'm gonna show you this picture slowly across the screen. And I want you to think about where does a, a mole rat live? Where does a mole rat live? And how can you tell based on this illustration? Where do naked mole rats live? And how can you tell based on this illustration? Look at the whole picture. Answer that, where do they live and how do you know? What clues in the illustration help you answer that? So sometimes she just thought about being herself, reading her books. The best days were when Aunt Ruth visited. Aunt Ruth understood Sweetie perfectly. So she didn't think Sweetie's hobbies were weird. Really, not a single one. Looking here, how can we tell that Aunt Ruth did not think hobby, or I'm sorry, Aunt Ruth did not think Sweetie's hobbies were weird? How do we know that? How do we know Aunt Ruth didn't think her hobbies were weird? Hmm. Sweetie and her aunt loved going through old family albums. Sweetie especially liked the pictures of her mom and her aunt when they were her age. So they're looking at all these photos of Sweetie's mom and Sweetie's sister, which is Aunt Ruth, when they were younger. Look at these photos. Look at their hair, especially down here at the bottom. This is Aunt Ruth at age 17. Um, and this is Ruth at age eight. Hmm. On her most recent visit, Aunt Ruth talked about how she called a square, she was called a square peg when she was young. Sweetie was starting to understand what that meant. Aunt Ruth said that being different was one of the best things about her life and that if you stayed true to yourself, you'd find your people. That made Sweetie think. So Aunt Ruth was also called a square peg just like Ruth is now. Were there really people out there for her? How would they recognize her? How would she recognize them? Was there a secret handshake she'd have to learn? She really hoped there was a secret handshake. She's thinking about finding her own people. Sweetie wondered how many times she'd been close to one of her people and not known it. Sweetie in the middle with a question mark. Maybe someone on this page is her, is her person. What if she stepped it up a notch? Would her people be able to spot her more easily? Here she is with her megaphone and she's screaming. My name is Sweetie. I like dancing mushrooms in rainy days. You too need to find your people. Maybe we're a match. Flyers are available. She's got a little, pulling a couple wagons here together with balloons and flyers. That's funny. Sweetie. Or would she just seem desperate? What is she dressed as? You don't know if she's dressed as a mushroom. Remember, she really likes mushroom and identifying fungi. For now, she trusts Aunt Ruth 
continue to do her favorite things and just be herself. And maybe she'd try a couple of new hobbies just for fun. Woohoo! Very, very nice, sweetie. She's trying knitting. It looks like cake decorating. After all, being sweetie wasn't so bad. Oh, they're beautiful. She's looking at the fungi. In fact, it could be pretty awesome. Well, aren't you a fuzzy little caterpillar? And who knew when someone else pretty awesome might come along? Oh my gosh, isn't that the cutest little caterpillar? My name is Sandy. Your shirt is wonderful. I wouldn't mind having a shirt with a mushroom on it. I love mushrooms, my favorite is Geometra Esculenta. It looks like a brain. Hi, Sandy. My name is Sweetie. Would you like to learn a secret handshake? Yes, thank you. So she got that friend at the end, didn't she? Okay, some questions I have for you. Now again, these questions are gonna be geared towards uh, more of second and third graders. However, some first graders might be able to answer them. Or if you're a little kindergarten student, you can just try your best, okay? Or just enjoy the story. A couple of comprehension questions I have for you. What do you think it means to be a square peg? Remember at the beginning of the story, um, Sweetie's grandmother had called her a square peg. Well, I wanna know what do you think it means to be a square peg, okay? And her Aunt Ruth was also called a square peg when she was little, just like Sweetie. So what do you think that means to be called a square peg? That's question number one. Number two, I want you to look up the mushroom, Georamicha esculenta. I did look up the pronunciation and it's a little bit tricky to say. I will type these questions out so you have the spelling of the name of the mushroom. Try to look it up online and, and think, does it look like a brain? Have you ever seen any weird mushrooms that look like brains? Or have you ever seen a mushroom before growing from the ground? Look it up, see what you think. Number three, what happens at the end of the story, okay? Does Sweetie find someone like her? If she does, how are they alike? And question number four, there is a lesson that you can learn from this book, Sweetie and her experiences. What is that lesson? We always talk about in reading group um, and in your classroom, a lot of the times books are trying to teach you lessons or there's that bigger picture or main idea of a story. And I wanna know what is the lesson of that story, of this story um, of Sweetie? What can you learn from her and how can you apply it to your own life, okay? So again, I hope you really enjoyed this book, Sweetie. Um, this was a new book that I learned about in February. I had never read it before. I love this book because I think Sweetie is so unique um, and special in her own way. And there's a really good lesson to be taught in this story. Again, I hope you enjoyed this story. Watch it. Um, have your parents send me your answers to the questions if you can. All right. And have a great night. Bye.